Well, good day. Iron Horse back here again, and um, I've just been working on uh, a little bit of a rewriting of the alphabet, simply because I am on a mission, and I feel it's divinely inspired for whatever reason. I don't care if you agree with me or not. It's not about me, and it's not about you. It's not about your opinion about me, and I have no opinion about you because I have specifically put myself through my existence to perform a role. And I don't know if you can read that there, but my role is Oli Maroa. And this is still a very much introductory stage, trust me on that, because it's going to take me a very long time to present Oli Maroa to the world. But I, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm under pressure now. I'm being pushed to do this as quickly as I can and so to all you free thinkers truthers lovers and good people cheers toast to you Oli Maroa is more than just the land. In its origins, it means Great Island to the West. The name was given to me by the Maori people. I'm not as good at pronouncing that as they are. I'm, I'm Australian. But we say Maori. M-A-O-R-I, Maori, but they pronounce it more like Maori, and it rolls off the tongue so much better the way they can say it. And I apologise to my Aotearoan brothers and sisters if I pronounce it incorrectly. Oli Maroa is the land of Australia, but it is more than that. And this is my opus day. <laughs> this is my reason for being is to begin the movement of something big. Now this is far bigger than me. And I mean I can understand how when Christ walked upon the earth he would have said something very similar that what is going to come after him is far bigger than him and that is exactly how it is everything starts with a beginning and everything also starts from an end so from the end of an age end of times is the beginning of a new time and this is the shift that we are living through this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius and I know we've heard that a hundred times or a thousand times before we don't really know exactly what it means we've had all our knowledge belittled so much that we think that um, astrology is just a nonsense. But what is it? It's a nonsense predictive thing. See, that's the thing. And you'll hear the Helioists, forgive me for saying that, but the sun worshippers are Helioists. These are the people that think we live on a ball spinning on this axis going around the sun. 
they are the Helioists. And all credit to them, you know, I used to be one myself at one stage. I used to think that and believed it and went out into nature thinking that as well. So there's nothing wrong with being a Helioist. You know, so I apologise to all those people who think I'm belittling you for thinking that you live on a spinning ball going around the sun, you know. It's a valid, hypothetical, philosophical belief, as valid as any other. And so, forgive me for my trespasses upon your belief. I respect your belief. It's a good belief. It's solid. It's... It's, um... It is what it is. So... Where was I going with this? Is to say, heliocentrism is the cult of the sun. The ancient Greeks worshipped the sun. Many cultures worship the sun. There is nothing wrong with worshipping the sun. Worshipping the sun, it's the giver of life and light, and heat, and energy, and fuel, all that we have. It's a good, solid, great thing to believe in. And I'm all for that. No problem whatsoever. In fact, I'm so much for it, I'm going to drink some of the blood of the Mother Earth. in honour of Helios. At the Last Supper, Jesus sat at the table with his 12 apostles or disciples or followers, however you wish to call them. They broke bread, he gave thanks. And who did he give thanks to? Did he give thanks to Helios above? Or did he say, I think did he said, did he say, did he say, the wheat has grown from the womb of the Mother Earth. It's powered by the sun. Absolutely. It is made into grain. It is turned into bread. Let us give thanks to the Mother Earth who bore it. The matter. Mata, Mata, the mother turns the father's love into matter. Work of the human hands, made into bread, for us it should become the bread of life. So he's not eating the father's body is eating the spirit of the father from the mother's body. That is what makes us material matter, physical matter. And then he takes the cup, fills it with wine, juice of the grapes, fruit of the vine. For us, it shall become our spiritual blood, the blood of the Mother, the Mother Earth. Earth, the anagram, heart. Earth. We'll be 
become our spiritual drink. And that is the Holy Grail. If you can understand that the mother's blood becomes one with us when we drink it. Her flesh becomes our flesh. Then we can share it. We are one with the Mother Earth. This is the biggest secret that they have been hiding from us all along because they want us to think that the only pathway to God, the Father in Heaven, is through Jesus. You must believe in Him, but He was literally telling us the path to God is through the Mother. The Mother. Mmm. Ain't that suspicious? Mmm. This is the fundamental truth that has been re repealed, re restricted from us for so long. That the one true God is Mother Earth. This is so profound because all the seekers of the Holy Grail have been looking for something like a cup. That's a cup. I'm going to get thirsty in a minute. A vessel, a vesica Pisces. All the clues are in front of us. Now, this is one of the things that a lot of people are not going to like, understandably, because all along we've been told all this one eye, uh, Masonic symbolism, and all this sort of stuff. It's a test. We've been trained to think that this stuff is evil and oh, look at that Illuminati symbolism and all that sort of stuff. But the thing is, it's truth in plain sight. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That is basically your set square and compass symbol in plain sight and it's built into our bodies. We are the Holy Grail. We are the living Word of God. His children, her children, lifted up in her cup. We live in the Holy Grail. This should be so simple to grasp, and, but until you've actually shown how easy it is to grasp, you've got no idea because you're thinking that you have to go through the church to get to God. You have to go through authorities to get to God. You are the authority. You are sovereign divine you are you G put that in the letters G U R U you're your own guru you it's all within and so with that I'm going to jump to um, part two of this uh, silly discussion and 
tell you what. I'll just leave you looking at that for one second. So you can meditate on the word. Oli Maroa. Because Oli Maroa is going to make kings of every one of us. Look at that for a minute. Now I'm deciphering the alphabet here. I haven't finished it yet. Of course I haven't. It's, I got so excited in the middle of it, I thought I might um, start videoing it. So um, I might have to stop once I get to Q. <laughs> A queer place to stop, wouldn't you think? But anyway. Let me start with, um, I don't even know if you can see that far, I don't think I can. Can't zoom in or out in this mode, no, so alright. I'll zoom in on it on another day because you possibly can. All I'm saying is that the alphabet is half of our language. Think about it. Think about it. How many cards in a deck? 52. Half of 52 is 26. Letters in the alphabet? 26. So it's half of what we're discovering. And what I just sat down and finally started doing is what if, what if I started putting some dots together so that the A becomes or, which is the, the U with two dots, but we can't really see. So if I make the dots a little bit bigger, it's the smiley face, the or. What do we live in awe of? We live in awe of God. I do. I don't know about you, but I am in awe of God. And so it makes sense that all in Maroa would be the name that he would give to earth, especially the one falsely named as Australia. This is going to get deeper. I have. <laughs> Trust me. This is going to get very, so good. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> because I'm just ad-libbing here right now. But inside of me, I have this seed. Oli Maroa is going to be the church that will unite the entire world under one flag. Didn't bring my pens of other colours. The one flag that the one the, the new world order have been trying to do underhand, underhand, underhand for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. They are trying to bring in their new world order and you know what they've been doing with the shooty shooties and the and across your face and all that stuff that you can't really talk about out loud because if you do, Enemy of the state, shut you down. 
They didn't know. Well, maybe they did. In fact, I think this is why they've done it. I think this is why they've done it is because they're trying to bring me to the surface. What can I say? They brought me to the surface. And as such, the way that we can defeat the new world order is to actually be the new world disorder, which is the Oli Moroa, to unite does come up under. Oh, I haven't even got to you yet. <laughs> I haven't even got to you yet. <laughs> I got to you. <sighs> you can't make this stuff up <laughs> in my ute on the way to work this morning, but um, you got to start somewhere. So this is where I'm starting, and we'll see where it goes. By the time I get to you, we will be united. I can guarantee you that. And the way we're going to do this is like, let's just start at the basic bare bones of what do you want in life? What do I want in life? What do your friends, your family, Pardon me, I have a very disruptive family. What do we want in life? I'll tell you what we want in life. We want freedom to exist. We want freedom from oppression. We would like to spend our time in the pursuit of happiness, abundance, and a fulfillment of our human needs. Food, shelter, clothing, the very basics. And every single human should be afforded that right without oppression. That is what our basic fundamental needs should be about. Now, who is oppressing us? Well, I can tell you, like, I came home from work early today. That's how I'm making this video is because I don't have to go out and earn my slave wage so that I can give 30% of it directly to a bunch of organized criminal thieves. That's all they are. That's all the government is. All taxation is theft. And I'm pissed off about that. 30% before I even get the rest in my pocket. But then what happens? Then what happens? Everything I want to buy, if I want to buy a beer, 80% of that fucking cost Fucking taxation. Thank God I don't smoke. Because the people that smoke, same deal with them. How pissed off would you be for a $2 cigarette to have to pay $20 for it? angry there. Why are we paying so much fucking tax? We pay tax to put fuel in our car so we can go and do the work to go and earn the money to pay more fucking tax. And how much tax are we paying on the fucking fuel? 
so fucking much. It makes my blood boil. So that is why I am bringing up the kingdom of Ali Maroa so that we stop paying so much fucking tax. <sighs> Something's getting a little bit heated. So this is why, this is why the kingdom of Ali Moroa is coming to Mother Earth for all natural born citizens of Earth. This is why it has to be. It has to be. Because the only way that they have authority over us to keep taxing and taxing and taxing and fucking and taxing us into the ground is because we consent. Now this is how we fight back. No. No consent. No, I will not pay your tax. I will not pay it anymore. I'm a man, God damn it. You have no authority over me. None. This is the law of the land. This is divine law of the Mother Earth who has birthed us to be us. Oli Moroans. Free men on the land. can be no more piracy on the land. You know how they do it these days? They've brought maritime law onto the roads. And so they're saying that our roads are part of maritime law. And they can send their pirates out with their flashing lights and pull you over and charge you fees and fines and Check your papers. Under Ollie Moroan law, every man, every woman, and every child is free to do as they will. Your will is God's will. I know, you're going to say, oh, that's satanic. But no. Wow. A bit of salt in the air today. No. Your will is God's will. So long as you do no harm. The golden rule is only do to others as you would have done to yourself. So if you're without something and somebody has something, it would be a kind gesture 
for them to offer it to you. You would do the same. If you saw a child on the street and it's cold and they're shivering, you'd take your coat off and you'd put it on the child and you'd help the poor little thing and you'd help them find their parents again. That is what human beings do to each other. We do as we would be done by. The satanic script of what's happened to the world today has said it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Well, no. Nah. If we reverse that, it's a God-loves-God world. We can reverse that. Write another version of that. We don't have to live in the paradigm that's been inflicted upon us by criminals. And this is the thing. These organized criminals, the mafia, who run the world, are criminals. So why should we have to keep paying 80% or more of our hard-earned stuff that we've worked hard for to organise criminals? And they, that, <laughs> that is what the spirit of Oli Moroa is all about. The spirit of Oli Moroa is telling you, you do not have to pay taxes any more. The spirit of Oli Moroa is working on the principle that because you love humanity and you work for the collective good of humanity, to build us up is that you have no problem whatsoever in voluntarily giving 1%, 1% of your livelihood, your what you work hard for, towards the kingdom of Oli Moroa. 1%. And I'm not holding the sword to your neck to make you do it. It's voluntary. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It's as simple as that. The way we're going to conduct the economy from henceforth is all our electric, electronic transactions. Every transaction of buying something or yeah, which is literally selling something it's actually them selling it to you is that they the seller will have one percent of that transaction no we had a moment there i think i need to pour more beer down or through Mother Nature is waking up to it. Mother Nature is telling me that 1% of electronic transactions from the seller's behalf will just be automatically sub subtracted <clears throat> in towards the commonwealth pool the volume of Roa, so that it can pay for the infrastructure of stuff that we're doing. And in so doing, we're going to just eliminate probably 90% of the useless. Now, these are the useless eaters, <laughs> the ones who are employed by the government to tax us. 
If we employ 90% of those useless eaters, there you go. Now we're talking. Now we've got something happening. But I'm not... I don't even want to talk about taxing people because to me, taxation is absolute theft. So, where are we going to get our wealth from? Here we go. Number one, we're going to stop monoculture of most crops. Like, we can't do it overnight. It's a long-term plan. We're going to do this a step at a time. One step at a time. The first one is, we're going to replace... <sighs> there it is. Wait for that one. We're going to replace... 80 to 90 percent of monoculture crops with hemp and this is so big I think I need to make another video we're going to start with replacing all those crops with hemp. This is probably the biggest fundamental step of how we're going to work our way through this. This is definitely going to need a part two, three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, but I'll see how I go. It's all in here. I've got it all in here. And I know how it's all going to funnel out. The first step of growing hemp instead of sugar cane and soy and sunflower and corn and all that sort of shit is that you are creating the number one crop, the number one seed that benefits humankind and, as it turns out, animal kind too. All birds benefit very well from the hemp seed. The second factor of that is that the fiber of the hemp obviously makes the best paper. It makes the best cloth makes the best rope, it makes the best, all this sort of stuff, and it's all biodegradable. That's the one thing they don't tell you when those nylon people from the planet Nyla, <laughs> that's a joke, no plans. Um, they didn't tell you that, did they? Is that all hemp products are biodegradable, so, you know, eventually that fish you caught that's another. Right, yeah. So, all our paper, linen, clothing, all our products are made from hemp. Guess what comes next? The inner herd. inner part of the hemp plant stem, the inner herd, is the missing building block that we've been denied for hundreds of years. So the people of Olimaroa, every single person who is a part of this movement, God, that's going to take me another hour to describe that as well. But there is a movement that is going to happen. Every citizen of Olimaroa, or member of the Olimaroan Church, Holy Mother of Flat Earth Church, in effect, is going to be permitted 
on grounds of religion to grow as much hemp as they want. That's See, this is where we've got to unite and <laughs> too many thousands of thoughts running through my head at once. Is that if enough of us do it all at once, say like every sugar cane grower in just in this region where I live alone, there's hundreds of them, there's thousands of acres planted out in sugar if they all started growing hemp at once, what the fuck is the government going to do about that? Who are the government? I'll tell you who the government are, and that's what I said all along, is they're a bunch of fucking organised criminals. That's what they are. A bunch of fucking organised criminals. We've got to get that into your head. They're not the government. They're a bunch of organised fucking criminals making a fortune off our hard work. That's the government. Government means to rule your mind. So they're ruling our minds to make us think that we're working for the community. That we're paying our taxes so we have police out there to find us if we go a little bit too fast. Shit like that. That it's not government. That is organised theft. That is organised crime. We are being governed by organised criminals. And we can do something about that. Oh yeah. We can because we are the little ants that the grasshoppers are afraid of. If you know what I mean, if you've seen that Grasshoppers movie, we have the power. They only have the power when they govern our minds, when they control our thoughts and tell us. Radio. So, this might be part three or something. Once we grab control of the land and start growing hemp, first of all, we start growing seeds for nutrition and wealth. There's a huge profit to be made in the hemp seed industry hemp oil. Oh, did I tell you hemp oil also works as biodiesel. Think the price of diesel is going up too much? We can just grow our own out of the land. Ooh. Big up there to you controllers. <laughs> we can roll all that clothing shelter we can make canvas canvas is the dutch word cannabis it means canvas that's what all the paintings were painted on all the bibles were printed on canvas around bamboo poles we've got a tp we've got instant housing we can instantly house everybody who's homeless or just make moving camps as we move from place to place and Rather than have to drive everywhere every day, oh, well, well, I just go back to my teepee and chill out there, sit in the canvas hammock. We've got so much power and wealth at our fingertips, waiting, just waiting to explode. But the biggest one, the biggest one is the hemp herd, the herd of the stem when mixed with lime, which is alkalized, they used to make it by burning oyster shells back in the day. That's how they say the convicts built all this great architecture. But anyway, if you mix the lime and local rock dust and hamperd, 
some water, make a slurry, and pour it into a mold, it will set into its own form of concrete, which eventually petrifies into stone. So that is why if you look at all the old churches or the old buildings and you see granite and blah, 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 pylons, it's all made from hemp herd and local rock and stone and sand, sand, stone, <laughs> lime, stone. It's all made from cannabis. The hemp herd is the missing ingredient of just about everything. And if you think about it, once you've stripped all the fibers and stuff that you want and you just put it into a big mulcher and shit, it would actually add extra fiber, just like they added straw to mud bricks to make the mud bricks strong. <laughs> it's, and why not some bamboo fiber as well while you're at it? You know, we've got this knowledge now, this tech, 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 technology from the ancients to the present to turn the mother of earth into something that is just beginning. That's that the end of the ages is all about. The end of the world, the end of the old world, the old ways, the apocalypse, the... What's the other term? Uh, can't even think of it, the one that means fire. It'll come to me in a second. It's, it's probably like a famous word. Like... You know what? It doesn't matter. What matters is hemp herd, local rock dust, is the way that we build into the future. We stop doing it the old way. Yeah, you know, the old way has served its purpose. It did its thing. This is the new age, the age of Aquarius. And if you don't know, Aquarius means water bearer. And Aquarius is also an air sign. And air, as you don't know, as we all know, goes around our head it breathes us just as much as we breathe it. You can try it. Try to stop breathing for a few minutes. Just <gasps> You will soon pass out. The air is breathing us. The air is Mother Earth's lungs. She is breathing us. We, therefore, between the marriage of her and the son, are the children of God. It doesn't get any simpler than that. We are the marriage, the result of the marriage of our Father in Heaven and our Mother Earth, Mother Mary. of Mother Earth's gifts are given to us 
Holy Moroan citizens to do with as we will. So that means the hemp plant, the coca plant, the poppy plant, you name it. Whatever gifts Mother Nature has given to us, it is our free will to do with as we will. So any of these organized criminal organizations who bring us down for using the gifts of the Mother Earth, you are the criminal. You are the hand of Satan. You will reap what you sow. So help you, God. There's a time to pick and choose who side ah you on. Are you on the side of man? Or do you serve Satan? I think you should choose very wisely because the people of Olimaroa will stand forever. We will last the test of time. We will not take your poisons. We do not accept your acts. Take your acts and act elsewhere because I swear to you, by the blood of my mother. We will stand. of mother nature and you can't destroy nature and you can't destroy me I will add more chapters to this when I see.